Firstly, can I just say I think that Dana White should consider doing a rematch for the, uh, the main event um, as I predicted that uh, Shogun Rua would win and actually John Jones won. I, I think an instant rematch should be in order. Welcome to my, um, <laughs> my UFC 128 recap video. I want to first start by saying that if you didn't know me um, and haven't followed my videos, then uh, first off, that little excerpt at the beginning uh, was total bollocks. And uh, what I was doing was trying to make a point about something that I've been mentioning in my recap videos for a very long time. Um, about the UFC's insistence on every close uh, um, fight being redone in order to get a different decision, usually one that they would actually prefer. Uh, we start then by saying that John Jones managed successfully and undeniably to uh, dethrone um, uh, Mauricio Rua. Now I have to say, and I did say this in my, uh, in my prediction videos, that I'm okay with either one of them uh, being um, champion. I think they are fantastic. Uh, Rua, um, I said, may uh, occasionally be unreliable. Um, that's only because his past since uh, being big in pride hasn't always been um, as good as I think he could have been. What he showed was great heart and great... Um, I think great character in accepting uh, the uh, first loss to Loyota Mikado when he should have been crowned um, and then going through his rematch uh, undeterred and winning. Um, I'm slightly sorry only that he wasn't able to defend once um, but I personally think that uh, he's proved that he, he was of champion quality because I'm sorry, I think he defended su successfully against Loyota twice, um, but that's just my personal opinion. John Jones is somebody which I, um, I accept has been an up-and-comer and was just worried a little bit about the calibre of people that he's faced. Um, I can tell you that my worries about that were completely unfounded and that this wasn't a, a, a Rua slip-up um, or a, um, a Rua dropping of the ball. This was actually, I think, a legitimate um, uh, defeat um, of Rua, mainly because this wasn't something that went to decision. This was something that had to be stopped, um, and it was, a, it was a, a, a perfectly legitimate stop, even if it was uh, Herb Dean doing the stoppage. Um, I actually met in person uh, uh, John Jones, um, a few months ago, in fact, at UFC 120, I waited to see him uh, to get his autograph um, and to get my photo taken with him, as one can see. Um, and uh, I've got my um, signed John Jones autograph up on my wall over there. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I no, you can't. But I've got all of them up there. Um, I did happen to speak to three, six, nine uh, fighters there. Um, anyway, so uh, I think that he will do a fantastic job. I wish him all the best. Okay, I didn't get my predictions right, but I still think the safer option um, was to have gone with Rua on that one. Let's have a look at some of the others. We'll start with Uriah Faber and Eddie Wineland. Um, Yes, Faber won. Uh, I didn't think that he would go all the way to decision. Um, and I do remember a, a, a few people commenting on me and saying, have you overlooked Eddie Wineland? And I said, well, no, I think Eddie Wineland has the ability to win if he's on top ball. He took Uriah Faber to a three-round decision. 
So um, Eddie Wineland is somebody to look out for. That is not um, uh, a, a um, that's not a bad showing from Eddie Wineland at all. To be able to take your IFR but to decision to not get submitted. Um, uh, he, he, there's, there's, firstly, of course, there's no honour in losing to somebody like your IFR, but at all. But to be able to get him to decision, that's what the really good fighters manage to do. So well done to Eddie Wineland there. Uh, secondly, let's have a look at Jim Miller versus Kamal Shalorus. I didn't watch this match. I only watch, I hasten to add, I only watch um, matches that I'm either interested in uh, or I watch the televised card sometimes if I can get the means uh, to watch it to work. Um, sometimes the means through which I often watch these things in the dead of night because I'm, I'm British here, um, English in fact, um, and uh, it's usually about three o'clock in the morning. Um, often I'm not able to find these things, so I only watch uh, the actual matches which I can find on certain websites um, you know, some hours, that's after the event, that's usually why uh, you have to wait for a day or two before my recap video, because I don't see it when I should. Uh, so there we are. Um, so what I was going to say is I don't know if uh, Shaloris was stopped at all for, um, for low blows. No, I don't think he was. Uh, oh yes, 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 here we are. What a surprise. Round two, Miller complains that Shaloris is grabbing his glove and Mulhall, who is the uh, referee, warns Shaloris. What a surprise. One of the big things that I've always been saying is that Kamal Shaloris is an absolute cheat. Uh, he really is. Low blows, he does everything he possibly can and that really annoys me. Um, I've watched him uh, in his career, um, at least in WEC, <coughs> and I was rather hoping that... Um, uh, that uh, uh, Jim Miller would win outstandingly. Now, he does get a finish in the third round, uh, which is good. It wasn't quite the RNC that I was hoping for, but there we are. Uh, Nathan Marquardt and Dan Miller. Um, Nathan Marquardt won. Again, a bit surprised that that went to decision, really. Um, and goodness knows what's going to happen to Dan Miller now. I think he's the one who's got about you know, uh, um, three losses in a row and was still allowed to stay in the institution. Got two wins, but under lesser calibres. Perhaps if he can actually get um, a decision, then he is worthy of staying on. I don't know. Um, I'm sure the institution will think that if they really do like him. Uh, how bizarre. Crocock got knocked out by Brendan Schaub in the... Uh, third round. Very strange. Um, and um, even if he didn't, Shelb was going to go on to win that um, that particular match. I, I do think that's really weird. Um, okay, so Shelb did get warned for, uh, I can't remember which round it was now. He got warned at some point for, for illegal strikes. I can't find it in the write-up. But he did, he did get warned for illegal strikes in that one. But um, I don't think that might, would have made much difference to the outcome. Uh, Lewis Arthur Kane and Elliot Marshall. I said that I thought Kane would win. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people disagreed. But there we are. Um, in the first uh, uh, round, um, although Marshall does quite well with uh, submission attempts, um, Lewis wins. So there we are. Anthony Nojo Kwani, I said I thought would win, um, but they've given the decision to Barboza. Apparently, it was the third round which was quite hard to call on that one. First one, Barboza. Second one, Nojo no Kwani. Third one, hmm, people are not quite sure. Never mind. Um, Ricardo Almeida and Mike Pyle, upset of the night, I called it. Um, and it happened. Uh, Mike Pyle got a unanimous um, uh, uh, decision victory. Uh, again, I said that it was going to be close between Kurt Pellegrino and Gleason Tibau, but I erred more towards the Gleason Tibau side of things, and he won as well, even if it was split decision. 
Uh, Joseph Benavides, he won by unanimous decision. Bit surprised he didn't finish Ian Loveland, but there we are. Uh, and Nick Catone, um, I thought, would win. Uh, he won as well. The match that I was a little bit um, sad about happening in the first place was Ralph Aston Ko versus Eric Cock. I eventually went for Eric Cock and uh, within uh, 2 minutes and 32 uh, seconds of his first round UFC debut, he managed to win with a, um, a KO. Hopefully Ralph Aston Ko is alright though. Um, and, uh, and there we are. I don't think I did badly on these predictions at all.